your re review for Planet X PX05 now? 05 Queerness. Queer, queerness. Queerness. Q U I R I N U S. Queerness. Um, yeah, so it, it's it's their version of Slag from Fall of Cybertron. And uh, they announced Vulcan, which is their version of Grimlock, which means they will be doing all five Dinobots from Fall of Cybertron, which makes me very happy. As you can see, he is a Triceratops, a Mecha Triceratops with ball-jointed Electro-Energon horns. Actually, they're just translucent. Uh, but uh, he's got a couple little posable spines here on his back. Um, he does have a, a pretty decent range of motion in his neck as well. Now, part of that is because if you look underneath, he does have kind of a hollow neck area, which uh, it's just the way it is. But uh, because of his spine, or the, the, not the spine, the frill here, and you can fold that out if you want. I don't know why you'd want to, but you can uh, fold that out to make it look a little bit more broad like a Triceratops, but it's intended to kind of just sit down here. And frill out like that. Okay, he's got an opening jaw, which is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a good jaw. And, and again, he's got posable limbs. Uh, here, he's got a swivel up here, hinge the feet, and same in the rear legs as well. There's a there's a thigh swivel. That's some motion there. Ball joint at the foot. Uh, the tail is is fixed in place. But yeah, it's it's a, it's a nice slag that uh, I, I really like. I, I generally like stegosaurs, which is why I like Samantis a little better uh, in general. But I like triceratops, trops, triceratops is as well, um, especially in dinosaur mode. Like I really like his dinosaur mode here. I think um, this might be one of my favorite tri triceratop dinosaurs. Although I will say, like Fans Project's version of slag. Um, also, I like I really like him as well. So yeah, and to transform him, we're gonna come back here and go ahead and fold those spines down. This piece right here lifts up, untabs, and then you untab these little side pieces here on the dinosaur moon, and then unpeg the legs from each other, and then you can start moving the legs. Now the legs are, are tricky because the tail, you have to unpeg the tail here and the tail's on this weird twisty armature and you want to make sure you twist it all upright, back upright to get in to uh, robot mode. But when, once you get every, when you can start by just kind of moving everything around, move the, uh, that's a, wow, that's a very sharp knee joint. Fold the knee joint down there into the leg, bring it around. Um, and then just kind of fold it down like that just to get it out of the way. Um, and we'll we'll do more specific stuff with it in a minute. So yeah, knee joint comes down. Flip this around back behind the leg. I actually want to leave this out and lift it up a little bit because the foot, you unpeg it, it kind of borrows a little bit from. Uh, I actually know how it borrows because they were announced around the same time. I don't know how much designer work, but it actually does pull the dinosaur foot in to be the robot mode foot, which is always kind of a clever idea. But you have to rotate that 180 degrees, bring this in, snap it in like that, bring the foot up, and then there's a little panel in here that forms the heel of the robot foot. And the tail comes down, and again, you got to bring it around. you got to rotate this, twist it around like that, I'll uh, fold the tail sec the tip in up like that. Oh, hey, I did it. Um, <laughs> and then there's a little peg hole in this spine that tabs in on the inside of the leg. Just like there, like that. And there you go. Can lift this up. Pull the leg out. Rotate it at the thigh 180 degrees, and then just bring it all in down, snap it into place, bring the foot forward, uh, straighten the leg, flip down the heel piece, and then do a little twisty thing with the tail. You can kind of fold it down like this. It rotates right here, and that's that's really the, the key to all that. And fold this tail tip in, fold this up, and then tab it in side the leg. And there, his legs are done. And again, be careful with these knee joints. Uh, they're 
way sharper. I, I haven't I haven't hit them with my fingers, I guess, earlier today, but that one really got me uh, when I was transforming it. <laughs> Coming up here to the upper body. Um, and then again, there's some cool stuff that goes on with the head here. So this piece uh, just kind of folds up and collapses up into the body like that. You just kind of push it up in there, and then you can kind of fold these pieces down. Uh, well, you gotta, there we go, fold these pieces down to thin out his waist a little bit so that they're not visible from the front. I, I, I kind of dig that too, that it cuts off right here and these fold in so it doesn't, you don't see any extra bits behind him in waist mode. In robot mode, front of his waist. Um, and then lift his head up. I'm going to go ahead and open up these panels and then fold these other panels all the way in on the frill. And then pull his chest open. And then there's you can see on his shoulder pieces here, there's two pegs. One peg pegs in for robot mode, one peg hole pegs in for... Uh, there's one peg, two peg holes for dinosaur mode because the shoulders kind of collapse up for dinosaur mode. Bring those up. Flip his head up here. Uh, then bring this back up and peg it in. Uh, again, you got to line it up right. There we go. There we go. And then these shoulder pads are uh, rotate, and they rotate out to the side like that. Uh, fold his front feet back. Open these up, and you can. There's a there's actually a little tab there that helps you get the fists out, and they do swivel, which is nice. They flip out and swivel, uh, which I think uh, is something that some other toy companies could learn a little bit about making those popping. And then there's a little nub there on the bottom of the hand that makes it easy to get the arms out. So there's that, and then the last but not least. Oh, did I get his head all the way up? There we go. Uh, his dinosaur head comes down, you take his, his dinosaur jar and you kind of fold it down like this, and then you collapse this piece, and then his neck joint is on the same rotational piece up here in his head, so as you collapse this down, it kind of pushes that mouth plate down into a slot in his robot body behind his head, and hides it. So that just kind of folds down like that, this guy, and then this should... This should plug in, should come down far enough to tab in. It looks like right here. Something's getting in the way here. There we go. Not quite, but uh, that comes down behind his head. And then you can leave his horns up if you want that aesthetic. You can leave, you can fold his horns down if you wish. I still say that sits lower. I'm missing a hinge here. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. There we go. Let's see. I thought that sat much lower on his back. You can kind of fold these out to get his wings. And then this plugs in. These two pegs right here tab into that piece on the back. So there we go. Let's see, I thought that sat way lower than that. And there he is. Uh, this kind of tooth. What's weird is like he's, he's got this collar in the game, uh, but it's not actually his lower dinosaur jaw. So uh, this one tooth in the middle, I wish this had been just slightly shorter because from straight on, it does kind of block his face a little bit. Uh, but everything else. And again, like I said, you can fold these out if you want to give him the wings. You can leave them. You can leave them folded up. It's entirely up to you. Again, same with the horns. You want them up? Hey, they're up. You can wide them out a little bit or two if you want. You want them down? Fold them down. He comes with four weapons. He comes with two guns and two swords. These swords are pretty cool. Now the swords, uh, they have peg holes. There are some peg holes on the uh, the dinosaur mode legs that they could have pegged onto. I forgot to show that, but uh, and then they can hold. You can hold them in his hands as well. There's one of each. That's a pretty cool weapons. Um, now, he's got a decent range of posability. He's got a ball joint neck, and the ball joint on mine is a little loose, not to the point of being floppy, just less resistance than I expect when I turn it. It doesn't shake out of place when I uh, 
in whatever position I put it in. It just, just, just less resistance than I expected, I guess. Um, but not bad by any means. He's got a little bit of a hinge here in the shoulder, uh, ball joint in the actual shoulder itself. He's got a bicep swivel. Again, these shoulder pads can turn. That's mostly for dinosaur mode, but uh, they are on a ball joint up there in the top. So if you want to turn them back or something, you can. Uh, dual hinged elbows up at the top and below. Uh, and again, he's got that bicep swivel. He does have wrist swivel, which is nice. Uh, the fingers do open. Um, and it's sculpted in such a way that the peg hole that holds the weapon is slightly separate from the actual fingers. So it's it's held in securely whether you have the fingers closed around it or not, which is nice. But they do open and close as one piece uh, there if you want to do it. He's got a waist swivel. Uh, universal hips. You can hear him kind of ratchety back and forth there. Uh, he's got a single hinge knee there. And then the kneecaps are articulated as well. Um, and he's got a ball joint in the foot. So uh, while the size of the foot and the armor around it doesn't give you a whole lot of range of motion in the forward and back, or I guess down it does. I guess if you bring it on the ball joint down, you can bring it down and get some more range of motion out of it, although you lose that heel support. Oh, does that come to, yeah, so you can bring that down. So you can support himself in, in a lot of different positions, and you get the heel, the, the ankle tilt, which is nice. And he's got the, the, the swivel there right above the knee. So all in all, it's another great little Planet X Dinobot. Um, they've announced Vulcan. I'm very much looking forward to him. But, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with that. And because it wouldn't be complete. I thought about doing it in Dino mode as well, but just the time it would take to get everybody transformed between all the modes uh, while shooting the, the video and everything uh, just wasn't doable. But so there is Quiniris or Quir Quirinus. Quirinus. Uh, here he is, with, and then we'll bring in Neptune here. Uh, there is the original Fall of Cybertron Grimlock with uh, one of the add-on kits. Let's see if we can get these a little positioned a little bit more over to the middle. Uh, we got Samanus here, uh, their version of Snarl, and of course we can't forget Kalis. So finally, like I realized that. Uh, Grimlock is the Hasbro version, and they do have their own Grimlock coming, which I will absolutely be getting. But uh, we finally have a complete team of Dinobots from a new, you know, in a single aesthetic, completed. Um, again, not all of them are Planet X, but uh, the Vulcan is coming. But you can actually have all five Dinobots in the same aesthetic. That's a G1-esque aesthetic. I mean, I realize this is more of a, a technological take on the Dinobots from the video game, but they're all in their red and gold um, and all that. They're, they're not the multicolored robots that came uh, out in the movie uh, Age of Extinction. So yeah, that, that's, it's really cool to have them all together. I, I do really look forward to Vulcan, although I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed because it looks like uh, their version of Vulcan is going to be fairly large, you know, like taller than this. And like, well, well, I, I, I'm looking. I think that's going to look better overall and match with these a little better than the Hasbro one does. I like this size scale because you got Grimlock and he's big, and then Neptune is a little bigger, and then everybody else is, to some degree, slightly smaller. Now, maybe I would switch. I, I think of it was absolutely a scale that, like, my ideal scale for these guys in robot mode. I think I would switch the heights of. Slag and Snarl, because uh, Snarl's just, he's, he's taller with the headpiece, but he's about half a head shorter than than Snarl here in robot mode. And I, I think I generally picture those as reversed. But again, that's my own personal preference. Uh, I, I think they've done a really nice job making, first off, making four Dinobots to go with the Hasbro Fall of Cybertron, the official Fall of Cybertron Grimlock. And I'm really looking forward to Vulcan to have all five of them in the same quality plastic, the same matching colors of plastic, because Grimlock's gold doesn't quite match the gold used on these four. But uh, they're a really nice looking group, and uh, it's nice to be able to have that, those five together again.